Hello everybody, I'm Jeff Phillips and welcome to this week's webisode. Just about every week I bring in a new business to help share some tips and advice about their industry. And today I have Daniel Porterfield and Daniel, welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate Why don't you explain to everybody a little bit about yourself and what you do? Okay, my name is Daniel Porterfield. I'm operations manager for TEDS Electrical and HVAC. We provide 24-7 service and remodel and renovations for residential and commercial businesses. Um, as I said, it is 24-7. So we have technicians on call around the clock. Okay. That's what we do. All right. So talking to you earlier off camera, I know that probably one of the biggest problems are um, people not changing their air filters, um, I guess heating and air conditioning? Yes. Okay. Yes. And why is it so important to do that? Heating and air conditioning uh, relies heavily on being able to breathe. So if your system can't breathe, just like you as an individual, if you can't breathe, you know it, you feel it, you struggle, and it'll wear you down. Same thing with the heating and air system. So it has to breathe, and that, that usually only one to two filters per house. Uh, it has a very limited space for the air to travel, so um, the system has to breathe optimally. If it doesn't, then it will raise your electric bill because your motors are working harder. It will clog up your coils on your air conditioning system and um, could cost a lot of service um, repair problems uh, because the system can't work. So it fails ultimately and um, all because of a clogged you know, 5 to $10 filter that should be changed or checked at least once a month. I recommend just putting it on your smartphone or something on your calendar as a reminder, um, just to remind you every 30 to 60 days to check your filter at least um, because it does make a difference in your power bill, utility bills. Yeah, I mean, I change mine pretty regularly and I notice, uh, especially in the summertime, we have dogs and you get shedding mm. and you know all the stuff that ends up in that filter just after 30 days. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Do, yeah, pet pet hair and um, is, a, is a number one, especially if you, and if you have allergies or children with allergies or asthma. Um, changing that filter and using a quality filter if you don't use some type of whole house filtration system is um, is is great is is a plus to, uh, to make sure that you know it doesn't affect your allergies mm -hmm. okay. in the spring or when allergy season is the highest okay so um, let's talk about um, other ways you can kind of maybe save money um, and I know you do electrical as well yes. so what about you know there's this like, I don't say craze, but maybe it's the in thing to do now, but these new LED lights, are they really uh, saving money like they say they do? Yes, uh, they do. I mean, if, if you have one light fixture in your house and you just take out the bulb and put an LED in, probably not gonna see a big difference on your power bill. Um, but if you have multiple lights that you wanna do, or um, you know, you know, starting in the mid 1990s, recessed can lights became huge, right? People like the clean look. so. Um, incandescent, a $5 incandescent light bulb, you want 65 watts of light, you paid 65 watts of electricity to get that light output, where now you can put an LED bulb in there that'll cost you 10 bucks, uh, but it only uses four watts of electricity to provide that same amount of light. So um, huge savings if you have 15, 20, even 30, um, you know, a typical three or, you know, 3,000 square foot house may have 40 to 50 recessed lights in it, you know, multiply that. It doesn't take but a minute to figure out. And the light's going to last 10, 15, maybe 20 years, the industry will say, but 10 to 15 years optimally. Um, it will save you a lot of money if you're going to stay in that house. Hmm. Okay. So um, another thing that comes to my mind of when it comes to just kind of like over overall uh, house maintenance is, is smoke detectors. Mm. Um, how long do smoke detectors typically last? Um, electrical smoke detectors, um, and I won't speak for a security system type smoke detectors, but electrical smoke detectors, which are required by the National Electrical Code, um, if you built your house after 1996, uh, were required to have electrical smoke detector in every bedroom and outside of every bedroom with the battery backup. And that smoke detector itself the industry says seven years. Um, I say seven to ten years. Most people in my industry will say seven to ten years. So, um, if you know if your house is built between 1995 and 2004, you should probably change or replace your smoke detectors because uh, though the if you hit the test button and it works, that doesn't mean it's going to work in an actual fire because the sensors may not be working because they get dusty and dirty and you paint your house over that time and those, those residue gets in the smoke detectors and um, it'll malfunction when you need it. Yeah, because I mean, my thinking was, you know, 
they should last forever because I've never had a fire. They're not being used. But in actuality, the sensors are working every day. That's right. They're plugged in. Yes, they are. And um, in, in the event of a power outage, same way. And so um, they're working uh, double time. So if you have a power outage in the summer or, you know, for whatever thunderstorms or major power outages, say you lose power for a day or two, then your smoke detectors are working solely on the battery. And uh, it'll, it'll drain them immediately. I mean, it doesn't take long to drain a battery working uh, in a smoke detector for 24 hours. So uh, replace batteries every six months, no matter what. If they're working or not, still take them out, throw them in the trash, don't, you know, or recycle them, but don't reuse them. Um, and just spend the money, buy new nine volt batteries for your smoke detectors. It's worth it, you know. Yeah. It's a very small investment and um, very needful. So you don't want to wait until that thing starts chirping to change don't, it. Yeah, don't wait till it starts chirping because uh, you waited too long. Right, right. And don't unplug it when it starts chirping to get rid of the chirp. Uh, uh, that's terrible. So just replace the 9-volt battery. Spend the $3, buy the battery. Or, you know, most houses have 6 to 10 smoke detectors. So, you know, that's going to cost you $30, $40 for batteries every six months but it's well worth it that's a lot cheaper investment than the alternative right all right thank you for your time daniel and uh, i appreciate it and if any of you are out there interested in uh, learning more about daniel's company please check out his website at the end of this video and if you'd like to continue this conversation online please do so by filling out the box below that's all i have for this time until next time take care